one of my favourite types of fishing has to be during the summer in tiny little rivers and streams. They're so accessible, everybody's got one, everybody's got a little stream by them and you can walk past them and to all the general public, all the joggers, the dog walkers, there's nothing in them. They walk past them day in, day out and if you have a look at this tiny clear stream, you can almost jump across it. There's nothing in this stream either, but fishermen no different. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to get a little popper lure and I'm going to bring it across the surface, hoping with the premise that there is a predator there and he's going to come out from cover. Because to the eye, the naked eye, there's absolutely nothing here. Like I can see a few bits of twigs coming past. Nothing tells me that there's a fish in here, but we know he's lure fishermen. So it's proper, intimate, back to basics, watercraft fishing. Once you get the fish, it's you against the fish. So everything has got to be dead perfect. You've got to creep around, you've got to get in, proper, up close and personal. And the best thing about this fishing is one fish from a river like this is worth a thousand anywhere else. And it's so easy to do, all of you can do it. And I'm gonna run through a few tips to show you how to get the most out of one of these venues. And I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun when you catch something. Well, first of all, tip number one with these close, intimate, shallow rivers is don't park your car anywhere near them. Keep it away from them. You bang that door, you could have £50,000 worth of gear and it's going to make absolutely no difference. You've finished, you've ruined your swim. You get clonking about, you've ruined your swim. An analogy I use always with these kind of fishes, say you're asleep, fast asleep in the middle of the night on a Saturday evening and there's a bang on the door, you think you're being burgled. The last thing you want your missus to do is wake you up and say, oh, do you want a spaghetti bolognese, love? You're not going to eat it. Simple as that. And these chub, these pipe, these perch that live in these tiny ribs are exactly the same. You make one noise, that's it, a shut up shop. But if there's an opportunistic meal and you've kept quiet, everything's steady, you'll eat that meal. And that's exactly what they'll do. So everything has to be proper. Do it. Really sneaking around on your hands and knees if you must. But you've got to, got to. I know it sounds simple, but you've got to keep silent. One false move, you messed it up. So my next top tip is it sounds simple, but so many people, they just don't, don't take this on board. You've got to have quality lures, quality hooks, because you've gone through all that rigmarole of creeping around, you've snuck about, you've seen a fish, you cast to the fish, the fish has it, yes, you're in, that adrenaline starts pumping, and you pull the hook, because you've used a cheap lure with a cheap hook. One of the best lures of all, it's a, it's a name, it's a brand that's been around for years. And I don't want to sound like a, a double glazing salesman, but with quality, when you're buying a Rapala, you're getting VMC hooks. So you know full well that when you set that hook, it's going to stay. So they're sharp, they're reliable. It's a really, really important tip to make sure you've got the best hooks and the best lures possible. Whilst everything else you do is completely useless. So a lot of people take tons of lures with them when they're going fishing. What you want to do is select the lure for this venue. So I've got ultralight poppers to make the noise and I've got a selection of tiny spinners and some small rapalas in a box. But if you have a look, it looks kind of sparse. It looks like I haven't bought any lures whatsoever. There's a reason for that. If I put 30,000 lures in here, what I'm going to do when I come to select them, as you can see, I could just pull a lure out but if I've got absolutely tons too many, I'm going to end up in a complete ball of chalk, causing unnecessary movement, knocking around. Just want your single lures in there. You've got a couple of countdowns, a couple of very small shad wraps, a couple of UCLs, tiny countdowns, the odd storm, blue fox spinners, that's it. You don't need to bring thousands. Just take a few, get them in the box, put them in an easy to get hold of, them. make your cast. Again, it's all keeping absolutely silent. And the proof of the pudding is whether I actually catch anything. Well, so another tip that I can give is that a lot of people question when I take them out fishing is, why is my braid so light? I use a four pound suffix nano braid. And the reason why is for casting. This lure weighs absolutely nothing, but because I'm a really light diam low diameter line, I can really chuck him out, which is what I need to do. I need to get it out there. So the line diameter is really important for fishing these tiny rivers because if you're using something too heavy, 10, 12 pound line, 
you're not going to get the cast out, especially today when it's really windy, you're just not going to get that cast out. So you've got to really match your tackle. And believe me, that four pound stuff, I've got some big fish on that. And it doesn't break, it's braid, you're instant. You've got the cushion of your fluorocarbon or whatever leader you're going to use, and it's all there in that cushion. So the braid is literally for casting and contact. So keep it small, keep your diameter low. So another good tip when you're fishing these kind of rivers is, you'll see that I'm facing upstream. A lot of anglers, when they're fishing from the bank, will go downstream. And it doesn't matter what lures you use. I've caught some absolutely massive chub on casting upstream and cranking faster than the flow. And what it does, it provokes that thing. It's just going to come straight out and think, do you know what? If I don't eat it, somebody else will. So fish both ways. If you're targeting one swim, think about it first. Plan it out in your head. Think, right, I'm going to get in the river here. What am I going to do? Don't just cast nonchalantly. Think about where the fish are going to be. It all comes back to watercraft. And as I say, one mistake in these tiny, tiny rivers, as you can see, I'm going to spook absolutely everything. So I've thought about it. I've thought there's some cover up there. So I'm going to go upstream because if I turn around this way, all the mud from my waders and mashing about is going to go downstream. The fish are either going to think, actually, there's a bit of mud there. Why is it clearing up? I might zoom in, eat something, or they might completely spook. So I'm not going to take the chance. The first hit, I'm going to go slowly upstream, cast, and bring it back under the trees. So think about it, just before you get in, don't just automatically cast downstream with a lure. Think about upstream as well. You look at a lot of fly anglers when they're casting, they're pulling it back with the flow, you can really rip it back. So just again, think about where you're going to fish. Plan it out, it's all part of the enjoyment. It's all part of the excitement of fishing these kind of like little rivers. You really get intimate, you've got to think. And as I say before, one fish, just one fish, is worth absolutely thousands anywhere else. It's that exciting.